Welcome back. Tough week for markets. The Dow Industrial is hitting the lowest level in a month this week after the administration's controversial firing of FBI Director James Comey. And then the revelation that Comey wrote a memo detailing a conversation that could signal that the president talked about pressuring Comey to drop his investigation of Michael Flynn. President Trump said that that was not true at the end of the week. Investors, though, are questioning whether all of this drama is going to stop or derail the president's pledge to reform taxes. We are back right now with former Federal Reserve Chairman Dr. Ben Bernanke talking with us today about monetary policy and fiscal policy. Dr. Bernanke, what's your take on fiscal policy? What would you like to see, and what do you think about the president's proposal so far? He's talking about a 15 percent corporate tax rate. I doubt that's going to happen because we know that the House has a much higher corporate tax rate. He's talking about a 15 percent business tax rate um, and, of course, much lower taxes for, for most Americans. What's your take on that? Well, we're at a point in the business cycle where we're pretty close to full employment, so we don't need extra spending. We don't need to give uh, higher income to consumers to just to stimulate spending for that, for that side of the economy. What we need is fiscal reforms that are increase the supply side of the economy, allow us to grow faster in a sustainable way. And I think probably of the various fiscal proposals, the two that have the most potential for, uh, for supply side growth, one would be uh, tax reform on the corporate side, make that more efficient, try to promote more capital investment. And the second would be smart infrastructure investment to make us more productive. And we all lose a lot of time on, uh, on, on busy roads and, and, and uh, inadequate bridges, and, and good infrastructure can make us more productive over the long term. Do you worry about the debt with all of that? I mean, we're talking about an infrastructure plan that could cost $1 trillion. Obviously, cutting taxes is also going to cost in the trillions. What about the debt and the deficits? Uh, what's your take on the well, $20 trillion in debt and the impact of all of that? Well, that's, that's the reason why I don't think we can do all this. I think we have to prioritize. Mm. Um, and I think, again, the higher priority would be to reform the corporate tax code, make it more efficient. That could be done with moderate increase in deficit. Infrastructure spending, if it's good, you know, can at least partially pay for itself in that you're, you, if you do good maintenance today, you don't have to do that maintenance tomorrow. Uh, if you make the economy more productive, that increases your tax revenues to some extent. So, uh, you know, again, I think that if you prioritize, you can uh, have the, the most effect on the economy without uh, blowing up the deficit too much. In terms of tax reform, do you think that that will dictate corporate behavior? In other words, if you see a repatriation tax all the way down to 8 or 10 percent, which is what the president is talking about, he says there's $5 trillion overseas. Now, we've been talking about two and a half, three trillion dollars. He says it's $5 trillion. And he said that if he can put in a repatriation tax of 8 or 10 or 12 percent, companies will bring that money home. Do you agree with that? Well, they'll bring some of it home, and we've seen this before. We had a, a similar situation under the Bush administration. So there will be a one-time windfall of some hundreds of billions of dollars, which is good because it'll help maybe smooth the way for, for example, for corporate tax reform. But it's a, it's a one-time thing. It's not a, it's not a permanent source of revenue, so you don't want to overstate that. But there is a, there is a one-time benefit there that can be gotten uh, by the repatriation. But look, we're, we've had a week of, of debate and, and of criticisms uh, about what went on uh, over the Jim Comey affair and why the president uh, fired Jim Comey when he did. Uh, do you think that's the kind of situation that could stall the Senate, whereas the Senate is focused on Jim Comey, this Russia investigation, and they're not talking about tax reform, and they're not talking about health care reform? What's your take? I mean, that's what the well, markets are saying, uh, yeah, obviously. I I live in Washington. I'm not really a political prognosticator. You know, the House of Representatives says, Paul Ryan, people like that say that they're going to continue to, uh, Mitch McConnell, say they're going to continue to pursue their program, notwithstanding all the, uh, all the noise coming out of the uh, administration. So we'll see if they can do that. I mean, they, they will try, certainly, to pursue their, um, their various programs. Um, but clearly, it does create more uh, distraction and will require more time on the floor in the House and the Senate. So I'm sure it will slow down the process. Whether it will derail it, I think, is a little early to tell. Yeah, I guess people feel that tax reform is so necessary to actually move the needle on economic growth. Why has it been so hard to do? Well, it's... Uh, 
you know, it's, it's very contentious. I mean, take, uh, take corporate tax reform, for example. The, what most economists would suggest that you should try to uh, reduce the rate on tax, on that for tax profits, but pay for that by eliminating loopholes and exemptions and, and making the tax code you know, flatter and more fair. The trouble is that, you know, if, you know, your exemption and, and my loophole, we, we defend those if we possibly can. And so every change that's proposed is going to have both defenders and uh, antagonists. So politically, it's very difficult, and the, the, there's been a lot of talk in Congress about corporate tax reform going back into the previous administration, but it was very difficult to get agreement on exactly how to do it, and that, that's, that's the challenge. Dr. Bernanke, it's been a pleasure speaking with you today. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you.